When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stand going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is Gayish. The podcast that's celebrating the second most exciting ball drop since Justin Bieber released the Believe album. Oh, God. (laughs) I don't want to think about his balls. (laughs) I don't like that at all. Oh, sorry. But truth. Hashtag truth. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. We're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And today we're We're going to talk about... Fitness. Fitness. Dick in your mouth. (laughs) Of fitness, uh, fitness. Yeah, I think when we were hanging out yesterday, I was like, "Ugh, why I don't want to talk about fitness." Yeah, and then I boop boop booped on the computer, and now I have some like. Did you wipe it off? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to clean the back of my computer pretty regularly. <laughs> oh god, just let you. Um, but no, I have some things that are gonna. I'm I'm excited to tell you about, especially my first thing. But any whom's else? Um. Thank you to Patreon members. I'm going to shut my fucking mouth. Are you ready? I don't believe you for a second. <laughs> Garrett Skidmore. <gasps> I know that bitch. We- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that shutting your mouth lasted two <laughs> seconds. Uh, John Veneren. <laughs> You just have to picture these people get the same thing all the time, you know, like Vaneron um, and Jason Beatty, 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 Bateman, Justine Bateman. (laughs) Uh, Thank you to our Patreon members. You get bonus segments, content and new benefit. You get the episode a day early, regardless of which level you're at. uh, Patreon.com slash KH podcast. Because you fancy. You fancy, huh? So if you need if you have a tough Wednesday then we're here for you if you give us money. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing, but first, wait, that but didn't first. transition too well. Um, before the news. Yeah, okay. I want to read audience feedback. Okay, great. Um, I'm skipping to the middle. So uh, the recent jocks talk uh, made me, on the jocks episode, made me smile while walking the track during my visit with cooking proud black women relatives in, I think he means Th- those are all adjectives. He was not cooking proud black women. He's <laughs> um, cooking proud black women relatives in uh, southern Arkansas. Y'all touched on uh, all kinds of issues and revelations. The question about who doesn't love a cop brought me here. Answer every black man in America. The question was in the name of fun gay fantasy with men in uniform. We get it. Heat is real, but loves. Uh, just keep it. Keep us in mind. We are weirdly unnecessarily trailed, then shot in the body after being. Uh, screamed at to hold our hands up then blasted by bullets time for more i think this is unrelated time for more tequila and friends in the rain much love d so thank you d thanks d (laughs) i'm Uh, something i scream often this really this really sucks i don't know how to manage my feelings right now oh and my pills haven't kicked in yet so you get to hear it real time yeah just say stuff i love a cop because my dad is one and that makes it very difficult because I recognize, I totally recognize the horrible oppressive system that exists that is totally prejudicial towards people of color, particularly African Americans. I am, I have no illusions that that's not totally a fucking problem and horrible. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be the like hashtag not no tall cops, no, not all cops <laughs> person and not like, all cops. Not all cops. My, well, my, my dad, my dad, um, we went through his service record uh, over the holidays th- last week and uh, he had all of these like the thank you letters and stuff that he'd gotten over the years. And um, he, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It just, and, and a, a lot of them were, I don't know the color of the people writing the letters, but some of them were definitely of Hispanic origin, which is a big part of where I grew up. You know, we about a third of the population is Hispanic there. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. See, I, I think what's important, especially like not just this conversation, but many conversations is not narrowing in on one person. Yep. It is recognizing the it is sy- systemic. It is systemic. Yep. The data supports that data supports that we don't have the right training, deescalation, uh, racial, like understanding of your prejudice, 
for the races, that is a s- systemic problem. That Hundo. is not saying every single cop is terrible. Yep. And I think we often have to find ourselves on, I love cops or I hate cops. Like there, it's more nuanced than that. It's not as easy. And yeah, you, it could come off as no tall cops. Yep. Um, but I don't know if people know that we joke about not all not all men hashtag not all men looks like no tall men if you <laughs> don't capitalize. But but it, it is more nuanced and it's hard. It it's. I will also say most of my dad's friends are fucking assholes. <laughs> okay, okay. So maybe all cops, maybe most cops. Yeah. So anyway, th- that's a great reminder, and thank you for sending that in. Yeah. Thank you. Do you want to do news? Yeah, let's do the news. Cool. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure you're ready? I scream that often too. Yeah. Okay. Great. For dicks. That was the joke. For dicks in my butt. I know. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Are you bored by my jokes now? Because it's always the answer is always dicks. (laughs) Survey says. Show me dicks. (laughs) (laughs) Number one answer. (laughs) Uh Okay, so we actually, we talked about a WWE person. Yeah, um, at that no. time, WCW. WCW, but, yeah. yeah uh, uh, Lash what? Huffman. Yeah. <laughs> but it, <laughs> Original name, who changed his name to? Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray, oh my God, yeah. did you remember? Or I have to look that up. No, I, I just, like. This wow, is, uh, you remember a thing from like a week and a half ago? I'm, no, no, that, that is not an insult. That I just am <laughs> so shocked that people can do that. I also listened to the episode on the ride home from my dad's house or my mom's house um, yesterday. So, mm. or day before yesterday. Anyway. Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. How were we? Was it good? you like i don't know i like i really liked last week's episode and it's during the holidays so it, it kind of doesn't have as many listens as the other ones but i really like some of the discussions we had mm-hmm. we're amazing well i liked okay i definitely liked that it's like all fucking over the place we we talked about yeah. wrestling and skittles and a secret language and like it, like it was all over the place whether or not you would want to be gay yep the answer is yes and okay. Rain? Is that what you were miming, Dan? <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing that hand thing again. I'm not supposed to do that. It's very distracting. Uh, fruit flies. We talked about oh, fruit yeah. flies. Making them gay. Yeah. I'm and completely we... blanking on what my Patreon segment. Pineapple jizz? No. That was... I, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be really. Yeah. Yeah, that comes out tomorrow, right? Okay. So. Oh, shit. I need to edit that. Back to WWE. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Uh, Dylan Miley, whose onstage name in the WWE is Lars Sullivan, Ooh. Uh, is just a, a, a homophobic dirtbag. And in fact, he was fined once $10,000 for a slew of homophobic comments that he had made. Um, so is this like during wrestling or on his free time? On his free time. I mean, his during wrestling rants are not exactly above the board either but like he's particularly bad uh off uh, out out of the ring yeah Uh, whatever okay so reddit (laughs) has realized that uh that 10 years ago he actually was also known as mitch bennett on the gay porn site randy blue (gasps) (laughs) some eagle-eyed reddit users were some of the first to clock that bennett a gay porn actor and sullivan shared some resemblances to each oh other my God. <laughs> uh, and then ringside news um fans tipped them off and then their reporters do- dove deep dived deep dove dived deep into uh the allegations and um yeah yeah did he have anything to say um well he deleted his twitter account oh okay that's a good start actually <laughs> so um i i don't know i don't know I don't know. It's, okay. I mean, it's for sure him. Like, oh, gee, that's <laughs> okay. I, I would say it's crazy, but we just hear this time and time again. This it's still surprising. It's still surprising every time, I guess. And this one is slightly different because gay for pay really is a thing. Like we've talked to David right. Wavy about the fact that like he only employs actually gay actors because there are so many gay porn actors that aren't actually gay that he, mm-hmm. there's a weeding out process. <laughs> right. Um, so he could have just like been, gay for pay and hating it the whole time yeah which is i mean the, it's still filled with a different set of problems than the you know idaho republican senator or whatever yeah right? yeah but, yeah yeah but like 
working with gay people, profiting off a gay industry, like putting yourself in this totally. place that you supposedly find <laughs> horrible. Yep. It'd be like if I was campaigning against dicks. I don't, okay, I'm going to go there again. I don't know. <laughs> no more dick. No more dick. <laughs> As I'm getting fucked. No more dick. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, hey, Kyle. Hey, Mike. There's a war on Christmas. Oh, obvi. We have to say happy holidays. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right? Um, we have to say, like, happy Ramadan or whatever. Well, now we have something else to be pissed about. <gasps> what? Except not really. I'm being... I, I know. I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, the company EasyJet, which is an airplane for sluts, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> has now made it their has now made it their corporate policy that their flight attendants will no longer say "ladies and gentlemen" on their announcements. Oh. They will say the more inclusive "welcome everyone," and I think that is great. Yeah, it's uh, two words, not three. <laughs> yeah, it's more efficient. Time saver, saver. <laughs> um, a customer complained that they were reinforcing the gender binary by saying "ladies and gentlemen" and "boys and girls." And uh, so they changed it. They're like, yeah, you're right. It does. So let's just say something that's absolutely inclusive of everybody all the time, always. Oh, and that's it's, awesome. It's better. I, I think about this every time I hear that, like something like ladies and gentlemen, um, and you hear it more than you would think. Like just before I thought about this, I was like, well, how often do people, but like you every sports all arena the ever. Time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. All the Oscar hosts. Yeah. So that none of our Muslim listeners have to write in about this. Mm -hmm. Ramadan occurs in, in the spring. It's not a... It's not I a, was just wishing happy half birthday to Ramadan. <laughs> 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 that new math doesn't work either. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Know. Okay, great. Um, last but not least, are you ready for this? Yes, I'm ready. This one's personal. Oh, sort a of. personal news story? Yep. Uh, in Pasco, Washington, last week... Outside a taco truck on a simple oh. Sunday morning, a gay couple were holding hands and ordering breakfast when they heard a man mutter fag, and then they had words, and then there was violence, and the four men allegedly surrounded the gay couple and brutally beat them, leaving one victim in a concussion Shit. and suffering bone fractures. And oh. this is just a couple of blocks from the gay bar, the one gay bar in the town that my mom lives in. Uh, she and I went um, just a couple nights ago. There's an interesting discussion about it on Facebook, right? Because on the one hand, this kind of thing isn't common anywhere in Washington state. At the same time, Eastern Washington is not the same as the greater Seattle area culturally. Yeah. There's, I mean, it's Trump country. It really is. So it's unfortunate because in that community, this actually, it, it makes sense. Yeah. And it shouldn't. Yeah. It, it, it shouldn't make sense. Like, the people that are like, well, you were in Pasco, Washington. That's what you get for holding hands in Pasco. That's not okay. Right. Um, yeah. There, this is where it's different between awareness okay. of what you're getting yourself into and excusing behavior. Like you want to be aware if a place is not friendly to LGBT people, but that's not saying it's okay. Like that you don't want to yeah. do the victim blaming thing. You just want people to know and, and be cognizant and be cognizant. I yep. don't have another sit <laughs> <laughs> Well, and this bar, this one bar that this happened next to, you can draw a circle that's more than 100 miles and not have another gay bar inside that circle. Wow. Spokane would be the nearest one. I don't know. It's just upsetting. It's like, especially when people come into our space, like gay bars are our space, it makes like the the goal of those spaces is that they are friendly and places you can go feel connected, feel safe. And that's terrifying when people come into gay spaces and yep. fuck with our safety. See, and here I go, I'm going to backpedal. I'm going to do the thing that I just said sucks and don't do it. Like it wasn't, it wasn't at the gay bar, but it was very close. No, oh, sure, sure, sure. And like, that doesn't make it better either. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, mm. I'm really sorry for the gay people that are in the tri cities. That's a, I, I think a, a pretty difficult place to live already and then to have a couple get beaten that just really sucks and i'm sorry and that's where i'm from so it's personal yeah. and anyway that's all man great cool <laughs> hey kyle hey mike i had an idea for you okay and i know that you're going to be down we did not talk about it but i'm going to do it anyway cool i think we should start right now with the polari word of the week oh my god yes 
I wrote down <laughs> Polari and then question mark um, because I, yeah, we got a lot of good feedback about you talking about Polari. I was super interested in it. Um, we've we had conversations on our discord server and it just seems like something really cool and interesting. And um, I've been uh, learning some Polari through the app. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, the Polari word of the week is Bona, B-O-N-A, Bona, and it means good. Good. If it helps you remember that, it's from the same root as buono in Italian or bueno in Spanish. Espanol. It's bona. You can say bona to see you, Kyle. Bona to, to vada you. Bona to vada Oh, you. we're getting ahead. Yeah. Vada Next week. <laughs> it's this word. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's it. I love that. So hopefully if you stick around, you can uh, learn Polari along with us. And I just think that's going to be really cool to try to like kind of have a place to to relearn that important gay language. It's going to be a bona old time. <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah. Maybe I will always post the, the Polari word of the day to Instagram. Oh, that's a good idea. But with the image being a video of the sign language of the same word. Oh, that's cool. Oh, huh. bam. Yeah. <laughs> Learn two languages at once. Yeah. I love it. One that makes it easy to have conversations. Both both that make it easy to have conversations about people without them realizing what you're saying about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I thought of that we could do like a shrinkage to talk about Polari and like kind of kick off a like, Hey, we're going to do this word of the day. And so sure. like kind of get people started on some of the words we already know. Like a Polari primer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. I'm That'd done. Cool. Great. Are you ready to talk about fitness? Let's talk about fitness. Okay. Okay. We put this on the list because it's new year's. Yeah. And most people, not most people, many, many people, are going to make New Year's resolutions for themselves that they will be done with by the ninth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. And everybody's feeling fat because we just had like Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then New holidays. Year's and like war. Yeah, and Christmas. It's yeah. the holidays. Uh, okay, so we all ate a bunch of food. Yeah, and, and so everybody's feeling... everybody's feeling gross. Yeah. and like your routine is all fucked up, so you might not be making it to the gym as often. And you and I both, I don't know aren't super happy with our bodies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is the part where, like, when I looked at this, we decided at a time and it made sense. And then I was like, ugh, like, what am <laughs> I'm? What am I going to talk about fitness about? Like, yeah. you know, it's so I think this goes to the stereotype is every gay man is already in the gym all the time and ripped. And this, like, kind of speaks to the expectations of gay men and their bodies. And not everyone looks like that and i think that's part of what we should talk about is th- i always say things that i need to hear and and it's hard for me to internalize what i say but like your body is okay um regardless of what it looks like if everybody did look like that how would we feel bad about ourselves <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure i could find a way <laughs> um okay can i start on then a t- completely unrelated thing yeah sure i want to talk about <laughs> richard simmons oh god <laughs> No, that's not unrelated at all. It's perfect. <laughs> that's true. It is very uh, uh, related. Um, Fitness guru knows mm-hmm. what dicks taste like. It's like it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what I wanted to talk about. You said knows what dicks taste like. Yeah. Tell me more about that. I mean, that boy gay, right? Not officially. He's not out. Is he still alive? I know he disappeared and then we found him and his family was like, <laughs> no, go away. And I think we did. I don't know if he's even alive. This is all the things I'm going to talk about. Okay, so, <laughs> um, he is not out. He's 113 years old. <laughs> looks great. Looks s- still yelling. He's sweating to the oldies. Yeah. Now he is one. <laughs> uh, sweating to himself. <laughs> um, yeah. So there have been several, I, I actually like when I started, when I thought of this as an idea was like, is he out? Is he actually publicly gay is he gay like what do we know and he is not out we don't know if he's actually gay i mean he he doesn't have i to my knowledge there are no women in his life so i mean but there are no men in his life i know but a celebrity of a certain age a man a male celebrity of a certain age that has no woman like there's there's a, it, it doesn't prove anything but it definitely attracts attention yeah yeah i mean and that's part of the thing about him is um he is so 
flamboyant and excited and wears crazy things that that's you know people are like oh yeah of course he's gay and it's really interesting to think that no he's not so um there was the podcast uh missing richard simmons which i started <laughs> listening to and that's like i mean i wouldn't say we're missing him <laughs> <laughs> he like uh so i started listening to this it's not new like this has been around for a little bit so i'm like late to the game but it's really interesting i started the first episode it's really interesting he's been like out of the spotlight for three years and just kind of disappeared yeah just stopped contacting people but the guy who made that dan taberski uh talked to dave holmes uh that mtv guy that's gay and so they're both both of them are gay so it was interesting uh dan taberski said that the podcast does not talk about his orientation at all but he said uh, that being said, he is an original and making your own rules like that puts you in gay icon status, regardless of whether or not you're gay. And he made up his own rules. Uh, Dave Holmes said he's culturally queer, whether he was ever actually. And then uh, Dan said, totally. Yes, absolutely. Sure. And he would, I'm sure, own that and love it. Yeah. So the guy that made the, that podcast knows Richard Simmons has been to his house. So uh, that's interesting. I mean, it's still other people labeling him as something. Uh, the closest I could get was uh, he appeared in on Wendy Williams in her talk show in 2010. Gays love Wendy Williams. Do they? Yeah. Anyway, Wendy didn't direct, directly ask him about his sexuality, but um, at some point in the interview, he did say, quote, any moment I could just go right up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not a denial. So I think he's a really interesting case. And he's one that like he's the extreme example that. I need to look at, I've talked about like, don't label other people. Yeah. Um, if they are not out, then don't try to make them out. And he's an extreme case. And I think a good one to, for me to then say, yes, it like, we should not call him gay. We should not assume that about him because that makes it one. We, we always say, listen to LGBT people when they tell you their sexual orientation, like, sure. And so we need to do the same for everyone regardless. And then it, it says that if you, display any of those characteristics if you're loud if you're flamboyant if you wear crazy clothes uh if you scream at people that lift their legs then you that <laughs> then you are gay and the whole point is anyone should be able to do any of those things and that is not an indication of orientation that's true so that's true how do you feel about that uh we've disagreed on some of this before mm -hmm. i i think celebrities are fair game i i think that you know that's that is not the same sin as calling the hairdresser down the street that nobody knows gay so you're cool with calling richard simmons gay i think so or at least like talking about it hmm. um i mean talking about it sure but not in a i yeah i completely disagree that we should be like yeah is he gay maybe probably like i don't like that conversation all right you yeah. don't have to like it <laughs> <laughs> i do the editing i can cut it <clears> off yeah i i think i think i, I think I don't know where the bar is or how it differs, but I think that the bar is different for celebrities. Like if you, oh, sure. if, if you are, if you are in, if you're putting yourself out there like that, you're going to get talked about and then jokes are going to form around whatever your public persona is. And I don't know. I, and I, the, but that, that doesn't mean it's okay. It, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, another piece that I didn't know about until I started doing this research is he had a defamation suit against the National Enquirer and Radar Online who claimed that he was trans. Um, they put these pictures of him seemingly presenting very female long hair boobs. So uh, in 2017, he sued them for libel, which part of the need for libel is that uh, you need proof of actual malice. Mm-hmm. So for those who don't know, libel is defamation by any kind of like print or physical uh, media that injures a person's reputation, exposes them to hatred, contempt, ridicule, blah, 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 blah. And a court ruled, I can only find the like initial ruling that, I forget what it's called, maybe ruling, the hesitant, the early ruling, the potential ruling. Um, Preliminary? But, yeah, but it was like not for sure. Anyway, I think this is the case. Um, Judge Gregory Kiosian said, quote, misidentification of a person as transgender is not actionable defam defamation. Uh, Thank God I thought this was going to go the other direction. Oh, yeah. Um, the court will not validate those prejudices by legally recognizing them, which that is 
potentially, I think, the first case of its kind for trans people and uh, libel, but this aligns with how we handle uh, falsely stating someone's race or sexual orientation. Yeah. Which, at, at first glance, I was like, yeah, you can't just say someone's trans. Like, that... I, so at first I was like on Richard Simmons side, but then kind of thinking more about like what the, uh, this is where I agree. Like he's a public figure. So there may be speculation. So what, not that it's right or wrong, but what are you allowed to sue for libel? And there has to be damage and saying that being trans is damaging to your career is fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Set an interesting precedent. That's Richard. What do you want to talk about? Oh, oh his first name's Dick. Never mind. He's gay. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, let's, I'll let's, I'll do this one. Do you remember? Are you old enough for? You must be. Rude. The Presidential Fitness Award. No, I mean I may be old enough for it, but I don't know what that is. So, back in the day, um, it was the fifties. This. Okay, I'm not. I was not born anywhere I, in the fifties. I, I get that. I get that. But some things continue into the future. Uh, past where they were invented like homophobia yep just like homophobia so in uh, 1985 there was the national school population fitness survey and the result was i remember very distinctly in late elementary school and then through like junior high uh being forced to go through these fucking tests and then have the data sent in by the pe teacher to the government I remember that. I think that happened to me. Yeah. And so it's it, they don't do it anymore, which I'm pretty excited about. Obama got rid of it. Hmm. But um, so here's here's an example of what boys had to do at age 12. Wait, I'm surprised you're happy about this. I okay. what, what? Well, I just would think that we would want information about how more kind of like a survey, like we want to understand how fit or not fit our kids are. Okay. Let's let's I'll I'll go into what it all entailed later then and, okay. and let's start with this. I found an article called The Sad Sad Stories of the Presidential Fitness Test and I totally agree with this. The idea quote this is quote this is in sbnation.com quote the idea was to motivate kids to get in shape to earn the rewards and perhaps for the 15 to 20% of kids on the verge of receiving that award it worked but for the rest of us it was dreadful mm. it forced unathletic kids to try and fail to be athletic to tr sorry it, it forced unathletic kids to try and fail to be athletic in front of their classmates mm. generally leading to humiliation it made them associate exercise with failure instead of encouraging these kids to reach for attainable goals it made physical fitness seem like a far away mi milestone for the kids the test really needed to reach it was a failure okay i'm on board now that was pretty easy <laughs> Yeah, so like if it was if it was a matter of like we take the kids one by one into some like back room, this is going to sound nope. Like don't let your coach <laughs> take you into a back room one by one. But, but <laughs> Dan's praying for that to actually happen. <laughs> well, but not with not with kids. We're to me now. To me now. Now. Yeah. Now. 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 Maybe when I was no 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 okay consent. okay okay um. <laughs> so there's I actually was reading the age of consent because I was talking to this dude on Grinder. I was, I was like, too. let's take it. Um, Not but, on Grinder. I was just reading the yeah, age of consent. Um, there's exceptions for people that are in like educational roles, like a coach like would be in this thing. And like, that's an exception. There's the to 60 consent. month rule that applies to anyone who's essentially in a position of power. Like uh, if you're like a, uh, the foster parent of the kid or the teacher or yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. Is, is podcast host a position of authority asking for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can definitively say that we have very little authority over anything. So, <laughs> okay. So, so if they were taking kids somewhere where they didn't have to perform in right. front of the whole school. Yeah. 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 And then fail miserably, then I might be on board with, yeah. the, with the idea or, right? or, well, that or and maybe paired with like some kind of like answer, like how often do you exercise or, you know, some of those things. I also don't remember any sort of preparation whatsoever. It's not like, mm. hey, we're all going to do this test coming up in six months. Let's all practice the things and get better at them. It was uh, just like, OK, that time of year again, kids, get your humiliation and shame out because <laughs> we're going to show it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also 
I also feel bad because I actually passed it in 1988. It was 88 or 89. And I have the, what? Don't flip me off. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can only imagine, as, hum- as humiliated as I was, as horrible as I found that whole experience, I was one of the ones that passed. Like, I can only imagine for kids that couldn't. Like, uh, how awful that must have been. That experience really, really must have fucking sucked. Is this segment an entire thing for you to brag about passing the fitness N- test? No. No. That's a okay, long maybe a little way bit. You want to see the certificate? I have it. <laughs> you do? <laughs> no, Are you serious? I, oh. I do have it somewhere, but I, I can't. I couldn't find it quickly because, you know, my room is a fucking disaster. Is, yeah. <laughs> um, so, the, the test was uh they call them curl ups i think that's just sit ups hmm. and then a shuttle run which was um you would have to run and grab the shuttle and bring it back the shuttle cock yep uh then the v cock. Si- the v sit and reach or the sit and reach and that was just it was supposed to be a measure of flexibility like touch like, your toes how much past your ankles can you make your fingers go hmm. that sounded sexy <laughs> um and then there was the one mile run or you could choose to do uh, the quarter mile or the half mile and then and then pull ups or right angle push ups, which I don't remember right angle push ups being a thing. And then girls had a separate set of things. Uh, th- sorry, the same events, but they had it was a different set of criteria benchmarks. Oh, okay. and just a 12 year old, a 12 year old boy would have to do 50 sit ups. Or 64 partial sit-ups, which I don't understand what makes it partial. You don't get result. all the way up? Yeah. Like me last night. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to do the shuttle run in 9.8 seconds. We'd have to be able to V-sit and reach four inches past their feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, or 31 centimeters in the sit and reach. They have to run a mile in seven minutes and 11 seconds. Damn. And uh, then seven pull-ups or 31 right angle push-ups. I would fail miserably at what a 12-year-old oh. boy would have to do. Oh, of course. Yeah, me too. At the the height of my jackedness, <laughs> I ran a 6-minute and 15-second mile. Wow. Which is pretty okay. Nothing no, to write home great. about. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, but like I I don't know if I could run a mile in 10 minutes now. Like I just went running this morning. I can, but yeah, it doesn't look pretty. <laughs> it's very sweaty and flaily, and uh, <laughs> like people move out of the way. They know before I don't have to say on your left because they're like, someone is dying behind me. I should probably step to the side. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Sound like a pug, or it's like <laughs> <laughs> I sound like I have ten an, sinus infections. An English bulldog. <laughs> um. So, do you you remember doing this? Do you yes, remember, I don't uh, remember if I passed or not. And I don't remember if I was humiliated or not. I mean, anything involving anyone looking at me, like, I probably was, but... Yeah, it was very confusing around, like, puberty time, like a lot of things were, Mm -hmm. of all of the jock boys getting to be jock boys in front of everybody and Mm -hmm. strutting around like they're awesome because they were... I don't know. It was was really confusing. I'm going to end this segment with a series of tweets about the presidential fitness test so pe- people were reminiscing about their experiences of that whole thing when they were a kid and mm-hmm. tweeting about it and i i think a couple of these are pretty great sit and reach i sat i reached i farted <laughs> ruined fifth grade <laughs> um <sighs> So and the the sit up portion you, you had you had to partner up with a classmate who would keep track of how many you did and that and, seems and like that. a lot of potential for lies. Yeah. So here's another tweet. So I was partnered with the girl I'd had a crush on for like two years for the sit up portion. She did hers first and did like seventy five. <laughs> I went next and around twenty I was tomato faced tomato red in the face sweating buckets and panting like a dog in a sauna on the sun. My partner asked me. Do you have asthma? (laughs) (laughs) To which I managed to stammer out a no. She then looks me straight in the eyes and tells me, wow, um, might need to lay off the burritos and run some, okay? (gasps) With a disgusted look on her face. Not exactly the outcome I was hoping for. Damn, Gina. Because kids are fucking awful. Yeah. Kids are awful to each other. 
there is a section on lying in here, which is exactly what oh, you were yeah, saying about yeah. the partnered thing. Uh, the tweet says, um, I got an award for doing one push up at the end of the year because I didn't do one at the beginning of the year. I'm fairly certain the gym teacher just felt sorry for me, so he counted it as a push up, even though it wasn't anywhere close. <laughs> uh, um, and I. Pull ups are the worst for me. Oh, yeah. And part of the thing here is you're standardizing on a thing that not all bodies can do. Hmm. Have I talked to you about ape index before? Nope. Human bodies, your height and your wingspan should approximate to the same. And that is an ape index of zero. If your arms are longer than your height, you have a positive ape index. If your arms are shorter than your height, you have a negative ape index. My ape index is like plus four. My, so your wingspan is super wingspanny. My, I have the wingspan of somebody who's six foot four, hmm. like, cause I'm six foot, give or take. Yeah. So, uh, what that does mechanically is I'm very, very good at deadlifting. Uh, my hands are closer to the ground. I could deadlift a fuck ton. When at the height of my CrossFit life, I was deadlifting 180 kilos. What is that? That's 393 pounds, three, almost 400 pounds that I could deadlift. But, but it also means mechanical advantage. Pull-ups are a fucking bitch. Hmm. Even super skinny because oh, you have a longer way to go even crazy ripped i could like pull-ups i fucking hate them i'm terrible at them the most i was ever able to do was like eight and then i'd have to stop <laughs> it's just not like my body has a harder time doing that because of the way that it's made huh so to expect everybody to conform to this line when they might be really good at some things and really terrible at others and say like but it's an up or down vote of whether you're fit or not yeah I, I hate that idea huh. so much. I wonder how long my wingspan is. We should find out. Okay. Okay. Do you have a measuring tape? I do. Let's take a break. Break. This is the bar where Mike and Kyle get a measuring tape. 77 and a half inches, which is 6 times 12 is 72. So that's 6 foot 5. So your ape index is plus 2 and a half. Oh. oh. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, wait. okay. So yeah, we did it. We did it. So Dan's ape index is zero. He like within a half an inch, his height and his wingspan are the same. Kyle, you're six, two and a half, but your wingspan was 77 inches. So you have a ape index of plus two and a half. And uh, now I'm going to use that as an excuse of why I suck at pull-ups, even though that's not it. <laughs> I mean, that's not, <laughs> that might be a tiny bit, but it's also because I suck at them. Yeah. You're also, you're also tall, which... I am tall. That's not a good thing for pull-ups. Oh. Uh, if you want to be good at pull-ups, you should be like 4'11". Mm, I'm also thick. With how many C's? About, <laughs> about, I don't want to say. All right, great. Uh, that's the presidential fitness test. It was horrible. It, it scarred a whole bunch of kids, including me, and I, it makes me, it still makes me afraid to like go to the doctor. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to the doctor? Because they always put you on a scale. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put the thing yeah. in your head. And, Although, I mean, I think that's a great, like it's very similar to being gay. Like there are all these things that we do that we, when we grew up that we assume are we're, Oh my God, I fear this. I'm being traumatized by this. doesn't diminish it to know other people went through that, but it's like, you're not alone. Other people experience that. It's not that you were the only one that hated that and, and were traumatized by that. Yeah. I, I think too, that the gayish part of it is it's like the posturing of it, of like who's good at, physical mm -hmm. things is so it's part of masculinity and, and yeah. toxic masculine culture and um so you're like really confused and you don't want to be gay and here's this but you want to watch those other boys do their pull-ups and yes totally 100 percent. but let's also let's also judge your masculinity yeah yeah right absolutely anyway okay go ahead so you talked about uh when you're a kid fitness uh but now i'm gonna go the other side and talk about fitness tips for guys in their 40s great thanks thanks kyle that's you it's me this is for you and dan and dan not me <laughs> um so this is from <laughs> although dan's in his mid 40s uh this is for all <laughs> wow is there an article for that <laughs> <laughs> um this is inclusive 40s okay great all 40s all 40 lives matter get on um, your all 40s get, <laughs> drink your 40s um <laughs> so this is f an article from the debt free guys who have a blog debtfreeguys.com they also do a podcast called queer money which i'll tell you about in a second but um mm -hmm. on this article i think it's great to what i particularly like about tips for men in their 40s is reminding you that like 
you know, when you go to menshealth.com or out.com or all these places that are giving you fitness tips for the new year, they're all 25 inject. Exactly. And it's like, well, okay, don't try to take that advice. You have to have different advice for different people. And we I'm don't. so fascinated to see how you dance around these you old <laughs> topics. What's different, Kyle? Why? <laughs> well, one thing is you can't dance anymore, Mike, because you old. Oh, God. I couldn't dance in the first place. Me neither. Um, too white. Uh, okay. First of all, focus on muscle gain. Um, these guys, uh, they're a married couple. Uh, they say that legs are the biggest muscle so they they exercise four days a week so two days are on legs one day is on arm and shoulders and one day is on lats and traps and high impact weight training reduces the risk of injury uh both exercise induced and otherwise i don't know what otherwise is exercise induced induced and non-exercise induced my mom was induced um and it's also like like bucking hay that's a functional thing like you're not exercising but you're lifting a bunch of weight oh i don't know i want to get fucked by someone that bucks hay yeah i want to be the bit the hay that gets bucked <laughs> hey buck my hay um <laughs> hey go hey buck me <laughs> <laughs> uh number two you in your 20s when you're younger you used to just be able to get back in shape you uh, you're a little bit out of shape then you're like okay for the next two weeks i'm gonna run every day and then you can kind of snap back mm-hmm. um you can't do that anymore mm-hmm. uh, i'm using the when i say you no, you're talking about me. It's fine. You no, so I was going to say that you specifically. <laughs> oh, okay. You can just turn and look at me. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so just like I'm being chill. Um, so what's important, especially when you're in your 40s, is consistency. So it's not about oh, I need to do this for two weeks. It's how do you establish a consistent regimen? Mm-hmm. Uh, number three, they explain more, but I simply will say double team it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, find a partner. Hundo. Man, that's not my fitness goal. That's my life goal. <laughs> oh, I made it sad. Okay. Uh, number four. Yeah, I found a partner because I'm going to go pay one, a personal trainer. <laughs> oh, oh. I thought you were hiring like a, a lifetime escort. Sex worker? Well, es- I mean, that's more of an escort. I guess if you fuck them. I mean, I'm paying for it. But I think they're going to fuck. <laughs> Number four, fitness tip. Do cardio in moderation. Um, cardio becomes more challenging as you get older, Dan. Uh, the stress... <laughs> uh, the stress uh, stress in general, which this could cause, uh, increases the production of cortisol in our ba- bodies. And that cortisol makes belly fat. Create, converts blood sugar into fat. Yeah. So lower stress things. And number five is sleep, which I feel like this is something that... I'm very good at it. I'm, I'm too good at it. Well, I Do you like, need more sleep when you get older or less sleep? Because my grandparents go to bed at like my mom 9 sleeps for like and, four hours. Yeah, I think as you get older, you have to think more and more about sleep. Like when I was a kid, like a kid when I were like in college, like you know, you'd do all nighters and you'd like sleep some like you didn't, I just didn't have to think about it. It was not like a factor. My fraternity brothers used to call me the sleep camel. Like I had a, I had a hump on my back that instead of water, it would be sleep. So like I could, I could stay up three days in a row, not sleep at all. But then like I would crash for a week and like, cause sleep didn't matter. <laughs> Camel God's accident. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to the national sleep foundation, uh, there isn't a significant drop off in how much sleep you should be getting. Uh, even uh, it starts when you're little, like newborns, infants, toddlers, it's like bunches like, yeah over 12 like f- over 14 like a lot um by teenage you're in the eight eight and a half nine and a half range um that drops down uh for young adults to seven to nine hours and then it stays the same until 64 so i don't know why they have two two separate lines on this mm-hmm. um and then uh at 65 it drops all the way down to seven to eight hours so so really like you oh. know what, what everybody has stuck in their head of like about eight hours yeah so dan sure. really soon you only have to get seven to eight <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think my tongue's mute from biting it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, lack of sleep causes shortage in serotonin, which causes us to want sweets because high fat and high carb foods produce serotonin. Mm. So that is the debt free guys' tips on. That's a good drag queen name. Serotonin. Serotonin. <gasps> That's true. Mm-hmm. I love it. I think you might have to be fit to t- do that. Goals. Goals. Life goals. Drag life goals. Um, so that's from the Debt Free Guys. Uh, and 
as I was like looking at this, I saw they have a uh, podcast called Queer Money, and it's really cool. Um, I just wanted to mention that. So um, I just pulled it up. They have a bunch of episodes, and one I uh, picked was uh, called Five Unique Money Challenges in the LGBT Community, which was published re- recently, December 9th, 2019. And it, one thing that I really like about this podcast is people always see the RuPaul's Drag Race podcast that mm-hmm. people do, which mm-hmm. that's great, but they don't see the other side of these are queer people talking about queer money issues. And so they talk about that. That was a good one because they talk about their story, how they got out of debt and also issues that face financial issues that face queer people specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was really interesting. So people probably have money goals in 2020, like have it. Um, (laughs) So check that out if you want to. (laughs) Yeah. What next? What next? Yeah. Let's talk about CrossFit. Okay. I have something about CrossFit too. So, so, so I did CrossFit for like two, three years. Yeah. Thought it was great, but CrossFit seems very scary to me. Okay. Let's talk about that fear. Oh, okay. So the thing with CrossFit is it gets a terrible rap. Mm-hmm. Like you tell somebody, first of all, CrossFit people won't shut the fuck up about CrossFit. <laughs> There's that old joke about like, uh, if a vegan does CrossFit, which one do they make you listen to them about first? <laughs> um, <laughs> but cr- CrossFit, uh, there are lots of ways that it can go very, very badly. Yeah, and that's that's what I've seen. Like the, the things are like you will very much hurt yourself. But in my experience, the hurting yourself is because either you or the trainer are an idiot. <laughs> like, well, so if you're someone that's brand new, you do not work out, you do not know the form. This might not be the thing for you. Yeah, right. Or at least don't go full blast like all of the crazy randos that you're going to see at the CrossFit gym. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. But one of them that I, that uh, like, <laughs> one of the things that comes up in every conversation about like, oh, don't do CrossFit is dangerous is Rabdo. Are you familiar with Rabdo or Uncle Rabdo? Um, it reminds me of growing up. There was the commercial for Rabdar Gab. I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm it was sure a commercial goes, Rab, read a book. Dar, do a report. Gab, get a buck. Okay. Rabdar Gab. Rabdar Gab. I still remember that. I don't know why. No, that has nothing to do with what you're talking about. No, it doesn't. So one of the things that so rhabdomyolysis is what it's the full name is that's what it stands for and it is it is real bad like if you get rhabdo it is real bad Hmm. and it's when basically your muscles start to eat themselves and um so damage i'll just read the first line of the wikipedia article because that's what i do rhabdo is a condition in which damaged (laughs) skeletal muscle breaks down rapidly symptoms include muscle pain weakness vomiting and confusion there may be you might <laughs> there may be tea colored urine or an irregular heartbeat tea colored some of the muscle breakdown products such as the protein myoglobin are harmful to the kidneys and may lead to kidney failure yeah if your pee looks like this oh thank you i wanted to see oh. yeah that's very brown it's look it looks like you accidentally uh gave them a stool sample and then mixed it up into a liquid so Overexerting yourself can cause rhabdo. Hmm. That is that is a true fact. I don't have to worry about it then. <laughs> well, so the thing is, there are only 26,000 people a year in the United States that get rhabdo. It is not common. It is very, very rare. Sure, doing CrossFit can cause it, but so can getting crushed by a giant stone. Like <laughs> crushing muscle having your muscles crushed by something can also induce rhabdo i have heard that getting crushed by a rock is really bad for you (laughs) (laughs) um uh, so the muscle damage that causes rhabdo is most often the result of a crush injury strenuous exercise medications or drug abuse other causes include infection electrical injury heat stroke prolonged immobilization lack of blood flow to a limb or snake bites Hmm. here's the thing though i think even talking about rhabdo, especially con- like conflating it with if you do CrossFit, you're going to get it, mm. is dangerous mm. because it's stopping people from exercising. Mm. Like, you're not going to get it. You might get hit by lightning before you would end up <laughs> getting rhabdo, so stop talking about it. Mm. Now, CrossFit also has brought some of that pain on themselves. The, um, the, the corporate entity that created CrossFit... <laughs> It, they're kind of dicks about it. <laughs> Somebody died of rhabdo and instead of like doing damage control, they started referring to it as uncle rhabdo. Like, like, like a good thing. 
like that's something you should be aiming for. Oh god. Like, and it, that's that's problematic. All I wanted all I want to put out there is don't be afraid of rhabdo. Fucking go to the gym and move your body and listen to it and if it hurts don't do it. Well, and, that's what I I have not been to CrossFit, but I imagine one of the dangers is like everyone's like grunting and lifting and mm-hmm. doing a thousand pounds of everything and mm-hmm. you would have that tend that inclination to try to show off and do more than you can yep don't be an idiot yeah. don't try to be rambo I, I don't know. he was probably strong <laughs> he was probably strong and listen to your body yeah and listen to the trainer most trainers uh, if, if they get a certification are actually really very good they know what they're doing they can look at the mechanics of your body they can make sure that you're doing the lifts properly they will give you alternatives if what the prescribed exercise is going to be too difficult for you or something that you can't manage because you have mobility problems like just listen to the trainer Mm -hmm. listen to your body don't like the fear of some random ass you're going to start peeing lipton tea (laughs) disease prevent that because it's highly unlikely to happen yeah um and stop saying it stop scaring people away from doing something that's good for their body because you read a wikipedia article about this fucking weird ass disease that can happen (laughs) um okay so you talked about kind of a shitty thing that the corporate entity of crossfit did yeah can i tell you something else that the corporate entity of crossfit did please do okay (gasps) well the people who win the crossfit games are fucking smoking ass hot there's a crossfit games i mean of course there are but yes and like i think some of them are gay i mean like legit like out oh cool go ahead um have you heard of turkish oil wrestling Hold, please. <laughs> we changed the episode topic. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're pivoting. I'm right. looking at oily Turkish men wrestling each other. Oh, my God. Okay. They're just like big old like gallon jugs of olive oil, and they're <laughs> pouring them on dudes. And this is this is a lot to handle. <laughs> Back okay. to CrossFit. So, my CrossFit thing. Yeah. A little bit. You don't have a CrossFit thing. I don't have a CrossFit <laughs> thing. Um, I do have a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, Is he hot? Yeah. He's going to choke you. I wish. <laughs> I want him to drop the barbell on my neck. Wow. That's specific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Uh, uh, I do like it when somebody's spotting me when I'm doing bench and like I can like, like they just have their dick over my face while I'm <laughs> Okay, I listened to our episode called The Gym. Yeah. Because I was like, wait, did I... And Overlap, I, yeah. Yeah, I talked about numbers in that one, and I like didn't want to do the same ones, and we talked about all of this. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the The bench... The, it's worth repeating. <laughs> um, okay, so apparently CrossFits have pride events, and in June 2018, so last June, CrossFit in uh, downtown Indianapolis, which is called... CrossFit infiltrate. Oh god. Which sounds like SEAL Team Six kind of style. Yeah. Um uh ooh. Yeah. They were supposed to have a Pride event and they canceled it. Because Indianapolis is a terrible place. Um sorry, Indianapolis people that live there that listen to our show no longer <laughs> go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Indiana and southern Florida should trade places. Then life would make more sense. Indiana is basically Alabama. Go ahead. <laughs> so many geography <laughs> references. I think I'm turned on. Okay. Um, so someone was like, at first they were like, you know, maybe something happened with the event, like not sure what happened. So they emailed them just like, hey, what's up? Um, and uh, after a couple of emails, the uh, owner of this CrossFit said, quote, at the foundational detractor from health, as we believe God sets the parameters for, is pride. We believe that true health forever can only be found within humility, not pride. Humility is seeing oneself as they truly are and as God truly defines them to be. As a business, we will choose to deploy our resources towards those efforts and causes that line up with our own values and beliefs. Okay. So they're basically like, God doesn't like pride. Yeah. Which is, which is not true. Correct. Um, so, uh, executives, uh, or one executive specifically took to Twitter. Hold on. Yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to check before I, before I said it. The thing is, 
a lot of Christians don't like pride because pride is supposed to be one of the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. Thing is, the seven deadly sins are not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That was it, it was a, a later invention by Dante. By the movie Seven. Yes. <laughs> yep. So yeah, uh, David Fincher made the, made them up, and, and <laughs> Brad Pitt put somebody's head in a box. <laughs> no, no, he got, he was the recipient of head in a box. It's <laughs> my, my head, head in a, a box. box. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gwyneth. Yeah, but uh, anyway. It, it just it's just one more example of like shit that fucking religion can just decide is true even if the if their own texts don't yeah. have it in there yeah like i didn't realize that the seven deadly sins are not in the bible huh interesting that's good because i've been sluttonying wait <laughs> sluttony sluttony <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was a freudian slip um okay so one of the executives at CrossFit. We're back to CrossFit. Yes, back to CrossFit. <laughs> one of the executives. It's going to be the longest episode ever, I know, by the right? Way. Uh, <laughs> one of the executives took to Twitter yeah. to support CrossFit Infiltrate. He said, uh, this is Russell Berger, um, who was. No, his name is not Berger. B E R G E R. So yeah. I would not eat him with ketchup. Um, he is the fitness company's chief knowledge officer, which doesn't sound like a real thing. Yeah. That sounds like a fake title. Yeah. Um, so often the spokesperson. Yeah. Um, he tweeted. I, can oh. I, be, can I be Gayish's chief nacho officer? Just to like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> can I be Gayish's chief knowledge officer? That sounds pretty cool. No. Can I? Okay. <laughs> well, I, feel I, like tried. We, I feel like we share that responsibility. Could we be co-chief knowledge officers? Yes. Okay. But can I be more co than you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, okay. So, Berger tweeted, mm. uh, quote, as someone who personally believes celebrating pride is a sin, I'd like to personally encourage hashtag CrossFit Infiltrate for standing by their convictions and refusing to host an indie pride workout. The intolerance of the LGBTQ ideology towards any alternative views is mind blowing. I believe Taylor Swift is a sin. That doesn't mean that it is. <laughs> well, also, like, uh, what is it? Uh, that thing about intolerance, like intolerance towards your intolerance is not intolerance or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is like, yeah, like the intolerance of LGBTQ people is what he's saying. Like, that's such a fucked up thing. Oh, like we believe you're a sin and your life is shitty and you need to repent and you're horrible. And then you're like, <gasps> no, we're not. And then, then they're like, stop <gasps> repressing me. Yeah. That's <laughs> such a, so intolerant. And we're like, really just freedom. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and then their priests go fuck kids. And you're like, oh. anyway, that's unrelated CrossFit. <laughs> so the CrossFit founder and CEO, this is like this chain of events that happened. Uh, the CrossFit founder and CEO said to Buzzfeed quote, what's his name? I know his name. Uh, he definitely has one. Yeah. Um, and it, it, he has a first and last one for sure. Yeah. Probably a middle one too, but not necessarily. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Um, but yeah, he does. Uh, okay. His name is CrossFit, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> the CEO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Greg Glassman. Yeah. Greg Glassman. That's, That's what true. I said. Yeah. Um, Gigi. Yep. Gigi. <laughs> Gigi says to BuzzFeed. <laughs> Uh, quote, he needs to take a big dose of shut the fuck up and hide out for a while. It's sad. Wow. Later that day, Berger was fired. Wow. And that same day, the CrossFit Infiltrate closed their could you say, store. Could you say Berger was charbroiled? <laughs> I really wouldn't want to. <laughs> I really wouldn't want to. Um, he was well done with CrossFit. <laughs> um... Yeah, so that's, I think, a great example of a company that had a shitty thing, homophobic thing happen and did the right thing. They immediately fired him. They, I don't know what happened to this, why this, I mean, this thing, this place had to close down because of this. I don't know the details of that, but the uh, the CEO expressed support for the LGBTQ community. So they did, I think, all the right things in reaction. So this is, we've talked about uh, Hallmark, who doesn't really have their beliefs down. These people clearly have beliefs down and then when a situation came up they knew what to do because they stuck stuck by stood by those beliefs stuck with and stood by stuck by their beliefs crossfit crossfit do it if it makes sense for you yeah or just do some push-ups that's or, something that what or do something do something that's something that i'm like trying to be better at is like i always like oh i need to exercise more so i put this giant 
burden on myself of like, okay, I have to run for 30 minutes and do blah, blah, but like do 10 push ups before you watch Netflix. Like, yep. like you can pick something small, easy, doable, and you don't have to be perfect or amazing or do the, like this really impressive. Like you, it doesn't have to be a workout routine that you show off to everyone. Like you can do 10 push ups. Yep. And that's a good start into your exercise. That's a good start into the last segment. Oh, what's that? What are we going to do about our fitness in 2020, Kyle? Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, part of what you were just saying is what, what like is the jumping off point here. Mm -hmm. I say it way too often on the show and I'm sorry. And I used to be ridiculously fit. Mm -hmm. And is it weird if I jack off to my own pictures? Let's not talk about that right now. (laughs) Uh, do but, you? No, God, no. Um, do do you? No. Okay. No. Well, maybe the one where I have like my head is cut off, so I don't know it's me. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> right. this one time when I was in this um uh uh like haircutting salon or whatever, I like didn't realize a salon. A salon sure. <laughs> um, I like didn't real i saw someone in and was like oh he's kind of cute and then i realized it was me in a mirror <laughs> it's like this weird thing where like you can never look at yourself objectively yeah. except if you accidentally <laughs> see yourself yep anyway yep 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 you you were talking about like don't build it up too yeah. much yeah. like do 10 push-ups yeah. do it do whatever it is that you are capable of doing and whatever mm-hmm. that is is enough yeah and going into 2020 and I, I feel better about life. I feel good right now. Like I could probably like take on more goal oriented things in my life and, and accomplish them. But part of the danger here is weighing the weighing how much I do. (sighs) Well, I should not try to go and work out the way that I was working out Mm -hmm. when I looked like that. Jesus fucking Christ. Mm -hmm. I would get rhabdo and die. (laughs) Like, um, and nor should I have that be the goal. I was in my early 30s then. I'm in my early 40s now. My body is not going to do the same things yeah, that it yeah. did then. And I need to be okay with that. But more importantly, I need to not let that stop me yeah. from fucking doing something. Because it's really easy to look at that stage in my life and look at those photographs and think like, well, life is over now. I just need to die. <laughs> right? Jeez, yeah. And and that's hard. That's really hard. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, I yeah, I think it's something people often do and and try to compare themselves like, Oh, I should be able to do what I did before. And if they can't, then that is a failure, which is like, you are a human that ages. You can't like, that's just no, like that's just not a thing. So burgers are delicious. Oh my God. Right. (laughs) All burgers except Russell burger. (laughs) We love. (laughs) Yeah. So go ahead. I well, I was going to talk about my exercise stuff. Yeah. Um. I actually a month and a half ago, I think, started like setting myself. I made a calendar and put like boxes with check. You things were doing I can so good. Are you still doing it? Yeah. Yeah. I was really proud of you when you started that because you. like you were like that was a big step for you. Yeah. And then like you actually did it and yeah. you were just like flagellating yourself for not. And it was I sometimes flagellate when I run. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you mean. Um, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been sticking with it. Uh, this is one of those things like you don't have to wait for New Year's to start a thing. So yeah, if, if, in fact, you probably shouldn't. Well, I mean, like and then I always go too far to the other side of like, no, now I'm not going to start a thing because it's New Year's and that's what everyone does. Like, you don't have to go that if New Year's is a good time for you to put. But there's nothing magical about it. If you start to like the if you get to March and you haven't done your thing, the year is not gone. You can get like that's, the, I think, the risk of like yep. setting years. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, that's like when I'm dieting and then like I'm doing pretty good at it. But then if I like have something bad at breakfast time, I'm like, well, the whole day's ruined. Yeah, fuck it. Here yep. I go. Oh my God. I was just talking to my <laughs> <laughs> shit's going to get crazy. <laughs> watch Bring out. on the poutine. <laughs> yeah. Watch out grocery store. <laughs> That's for you, Canada. <laughs> um, oh, Canada. Uh, so <laughs> uh, a month and a half ago, I yeah made this thing. What? We had, a, we, had a, we had a listener write in and say that they thought they were they were saying how important the podcast was to them, blah, blah, blah. And then it must have been an autocorrect or a typo or something. They said that Luke's jokes are terrible. And then I was looking at the keypad and I was like, you could type Mike or Kyle and it would come out as Luke. I read that, too. And I was like, <laughs> who's, who's Luke? He sounds hot. <laughs> but now now I'm like, I want to know which one he meant. I... <laughs> 
Is it? I just assumed is it Luke was our me. celebrity name. Like, oh my I God. assumed it was me. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's true. Maybe it is you. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are we talking about? Oh, oh, I I set a goal, uh, and and it's exercise maybe like four or five times a week. Uh, there are other things like make sure I walk my dog thirty minutes every day. There are some social things on there like play Dungeons and Dragons, do the podcast. Um, so a bunch of different things uh, that I'm trying to do. And at the end of the day, if I do it, I check it off. And yeah, that's been really useful and helpful for me. And and so I've got a personal trainer two days out. Of, very lucky position that I'm in to be able to do this. Um, yeah. have a personal trainer that, um, I go to twice a week and then run outside of that on my own. And so, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I think part of it is like my meds are working. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still making tweaks, but like my meds are working and I'm feeling better in general. Mm-hmm. And that allows me to, that, that was the biggest thing to help with my exercise, to be able to get to a place where like I can physically get out of bed and do something and yep. motivate myself to do something. Please cut this if you don't want to like yeah, okay. talk talk about it. But how much of that is is because of drinking? Because you've like mm. you've really you've really worked on that. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and yeah, that was uh, what my psychiatrist said. Is she was like, I don't feel comfortable making any more adjustments to your medication because technically, if you drink more than two drinks a day, we don't know if your medication is working or not. Yep. So I did set that as a goal um, so that I can figure out my medication um so yeah i don't know it's it's hard to say how much it's that how much it's other things i honestly think it's very much due to quitting my job Mm -hmm. which was like dragging me down in life and medication Mm -hmm. so i don't know maybe that plays a little role but uh, so that's what i think like your first step towards exercise may not be exercise itself it may be I can't force myself to exercise. So what are the things I need to get right first so that I can have the motivation? And that might be counseling, yeah. psychiatry. That might be you know, counseling.com slash cash. <laughs> <laughs> giving you that one for free. Um, and, or, or, you know, getting out of a bad relationship. Like there, there could be a lot of things that dare I say myriad things that you could do to, you quitting your job, I was like, oh, girl, that is not a good idea. And uh, then you did, and it has been. Yeah, and it has been. It, yeah. I hope I expressed my concern in a supportive way and that it's okay now. Oh, like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone, I think one of the challenges is it was kind of validating the fear I had in my head of like, you're not supposed to do this, but yeah. it still was the right thing for me to do, even though it is usually ill-advised to quit your job before you have your next job lined up. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Fitness. Fitness. Back to fitness. Yeah. Um, what's your plan? What's your... So I went... So right like two blocks away right here across Mercer is a gym. And it's like... It's not a gym that you can just like go to. It's like a personal training gym. But it's not personal training because it's small group training. So mm-hmm. like there's a maximum of five people at any given time slot with with a trainer. So... Most of the time when you roll in there, it's like you and maybe one other person, but it could be up to five oh, people. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then you do the thing, and it's it's significantly cheaper than like a dedicated full-time personal mm. trainer, which I've also done before. I, um, I feel really uncomfortable when, I mean, just going to the gym in general, but when I have a personal trainer, this is part of my anxiety, like there are other people that are there on their own, so I'm like, oh my God, they think I suck, and I don't um, know how to like, so that's really cool that you have a place that's like, everyone is in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah, and so they do this this small group training thing, but then they also have classes, and like some of it's CrossFit e, and some of it is like just lifting, and some of it is like just the conditioning part, and blah blah blah. Anyway, so uh, two weeks ago, I went in and signed up, and oh, nice. I did my like they have to evaluate and make sure that you're not like gonna die. Yeah, not like, you're not gonna get rhabdo. Yep, not yep. So they look at like your form and and flexibility and. Mm-hmm. So I, I I passed all of that. I took I did I did that at the same time as this girl, and I felt really bad because she clearly had no idea what was happening. <laughs> I I don't know that she's ever worked out before ever. And then I had anxiety about like, well, don't do too good. You don't want her to feel bad about herself. Yeah, and then yeah, I had yeah. to pep talk myself and be like, no, you know Just what you're do- doing. Just do it the thing. Yeah. And anyway. Yeah. Oh my God, anyway, I so I haven't made it back since doing that, but it's the fucking holidays and shit's crazy. And my, my grand uncle died and it was Christmas and there's New Year's party coming up. And like, anyway, I'm going to be that asshole <laughs> the first week of January 
back in there and and doing it. Yeah. And I I feel I feel ready and I don't know what that means. I've been saying this to a lot of people like at the end of the year it's natural to look back and think about like hey where have I been and then of course the corollary to that is where am I going mm-hmm. and I feel ready. Hmm. I need to figure out what for. Hmm. Like yeah, but but one of the components of that is for sure fitness and then other things too. Um, you have in the past kind of made goals of going to the gym and and done it failed and, miserably. I, okay, go ahead. I would I would suggest updating your language to. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that the nicest way to say you're change yourself? A, you're like a therapist. <laughs> I know. Um, <gasps> last night I had a dream that my therapist insisted as part of therapy that we cuddle, and it was, <laughs> it, was like, it was not okay. It was so uncomfortable because she's a middle aged lesbian. Uh, <laughs> that would probably be the only way it would be okay. Like she said that of in, us. The, in the dream, she said that <laughs> neither of us are going to be into it, so it's fine. Yeah. Like I was convinced by that. Our dream me was like, "You are right." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's so weird. <laughs> Did it help in your dream? No, I woke up sweating and upset. <laughs> <laughs> um. Fitness. I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> you told me to update my language because oh, I said I failed miserably because... You didn't fail miserably. You made a step to go work out and you did it. Like, you just said to everyone else, do something. Like, don't let things get in your way. And, and you you did stuff. So I've run this by you a couple of times. It's never gone well. <laughs> I think that we should make commitments to our listeners. Oh, of yeah. Of what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And then there's accountability there because accountability... That's number one for me. It mm-hmm. has to be there. I am not capable of providing it for myself. And instead of beating myself up for it, I need to just admit that and accept it and then yeah. find external accountability measures. What would you... Uh, so on our Discord uh, server, there is a uh, health and fitness or something yep. uh, section. Yep. Um, so that's one way to talk about health and fitness. But do you have a specific idea of like what what would be helpful for accountability? I am... Okay, Yes. And I don't want to say it because then that means that I have to do it and I don't want to do it. So I'm going to avoid it and not say it. Or, Should we take a break? Yeah. <laughs> In the upcoming Patreon segment, I'm going to talk about how I w- made myself accountable for working out. Hmm. Okay. That's, we did Just not plan idea. that, but that's great. That's mm-hmm. fantastic. Well, but do you want to say it and you can tell me if you want me to cut it later so that you have the option of sticking with it? I mean, you also said that you were going to do a new <laughs> theme song. Yeah. <laughs> that, so you don't necessarily uh, you don't have to follow through on things you say no this is important i feel fucking guilty as fuck that i haven't actually followed uh, through on that and part of that is because shit's been so goddamn busy yeah, yeah. this is the wrong time of year to make a commitment mm. um so maybe it'd be good to make a commitment yeah i will do the news theme song i already have it figured out i just need to do it do you want to break off a sneak breeze no okay cool that was fun um <laughs> Uh, b- before pictures, before pictures is the answer. Oh, and like, f- uh, fuck me! No. <laughs> I I'm not participating in this. Um, I actually did take my own personal before pictures. Yeah, and I, I'm disgusting. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing because I'm uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, me too. I look like Jabba the Hutt fucked a Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> Again, now I'm laughing at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I hate it so much. Oh. Someone uh, recently, it's always I hate this. I can't, I can't take compliments. It's like someone uh, said he thought I was very attractive, and like he was inside me, so I believe him. <laughs> so yeah. Well, okay. There's a component also of like you don't know what other people are into. I know. Like yeah. You might think that you're gross, but that might be exactly what somebody else is looking for. And that's hard to like, that's hard to accept. That's hard to yeah. it, like assimilate. Yeah. And yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what I wanted to say. It's a whole mind fuck, right? It's a mind fuck. Like I, I, I'm never going to look like I used to, nor do I think I want to, because it, mm. it was awful and it was a lot of work and not worth it because hated myself it blah 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 the other thing that i could do or might do is just it would be nice to be under 200 pounds again Mm. when i was on lexapro uh at my heaviest i was like 250 give or take 
I have not been eating better. I have not been exercising, but just stopping Lexapro over the last seven or eight months, I'm down to 220. So losing 20 more pounds to be under 200 pounds again, hmm. that would be pretty great. I'm and, very impressed that you're saying a weight. Like I don't tell people how much I weigh and don't want to and yeah. won't. Yeah, I get it. I get that. Ever, the annoying thing is that everyone, I am definitely overweight and everyone says to me like, oh, you don't look at like, uh, I got this study that like fat distributes pretty evenly throughout my body, which is very lucky for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but also that doesn't reveal that, that can't, I mean, I, I, I think I do like look, I definitely look bigger because I have gained weight, but also like it doesn't totally reflect the actuality of like what's happening. That's rough because data is data. Like mm -hmm. there is a number, like you step on the scale and there is a number divide that into your height that is a number yeah there is an objective answer to yeah you, you know body fat percentage should figure into that because bmi is stupid yeah um and whatever that like that i have done that number when i started personal training and i am yeah i'm over like what my body fat should be yep and that's hard because of what that then represents and means mm -hmm. especially in the gay world especially in the gay world mm -hmm. yep I don't know what to do now. Take a break? Well, I feel like there's something we should say oh. or, or or do. I don't know. I'm Like something positive? Why would we start now? <laughs> no, um, I, I think um, I'm reminded of the great poet Lizzo. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was, I was really hating it until, yeah, okay. And she said, so she did a Tiny Desk concert on NPR. And at the end of it, she does a great show and she's incredible she's just wrapping up and she says to the audience if you can love me you can love yourself if you can love my big black ass <laughs> you can love yourself and i think that's that's the hardest thing in the world to do and that's what we should do and if that means getting fit in 2020 as an act of self-love not as an act of running away from self-hate great that's beautiful thanks lizzo yeah <laughs> <laughs> should we take a break let's take a break let's take a break fitness break fitness break oh god richard no. simmons let's sweat to some oldies <laughs> this is the part where mike and kyle take a break are we back we're back. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> Jesus. Taking me by surprise. Um, we're going to do our gayest and straightest. We're going to do our gayest and straightest. But first, but first our website is gayishpodcast.com. We are on thousands of social media sites, including Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, at Gayish Podcast or slash Gayish Podcast. Our hotline, you can leave us voicemails or send us text messages is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rate, rate supply. supply. Um, our email is gmail at gayishpodcast.com. And we have a Discord server. It's fun. Yeah. If you want to join a in. A fuck ton of people joined last week. I don't know why. Oh, really? We're up to, it's like 240 people now or something. It's ridiculous. Wow. Yeah interesting okay yeah and there's that um health and fitness or whatever it's i should have looked at but like there's a fitness section if that's uh, something you're interested in also a send nudes channel for dicks <laughs> <laughs> it's not related to fitness but just letting you know uh make sure you rate review subscribe and recommend and we really appreciate uh that is something you can give to us that that keeps on giving yep yep just like me um gay and straightest let's do our gay and straightest I'll go. Okay, you go. Uh, the gayest, nope, straightest thing uh, is where we're going to start. Um, when I went home for Christmas, I threw the football with my dad. Gross. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> not just that, like, I'm good at it. Like, I can throw a spiral. I can hit you in a chest, which is where you're supposed to throw the football. Like, it took me, like, a few throws to, like, kind of, I've not thrown a football in forever, but... I'm good at throwing a football. I'm like moderately good at lots of athletic things. Would you beat your hot brother in a fight? <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. My straight, nope, gayest thing yep. is my brother. Um, uh, so he was there too. We were standing next to each other throwing the ball to my dad. And I don't know how it came up, but my dad mentioned something about 
uh, catcher and my brother like leaned over to me and was like no gay jokes <laughs> which <laughs> oh, is that's great it was hilarious yes it's perfect because he like understands and like for people to be able to joke about gay stuff like that yep. is really nice and so uh <laughs> that joke is the gayest thing yep yep that's awesome yeah I what about it. you um well let's see where to start the gayest mm-hmm. thing about me this week was being rejected <gasps> and i'll tell the story okay um so let's see friday night i went out and went saw club hopping yeah club saw drag queens went to this other bar went to this other bar anyway met this boy and he's from puerto rico and adorable later would find out that he's like 24 (laughs) and of course of course and we like flirted a whole bunch and like at least i thought that's what was happening (laughs) And he told me his life story. And then I took him for tacos afterwards at uh, Bar Su at Tacos de la Noche. And then he went home and then I went home. And then last night I went out again and hanging out, blah, blah, blah. And then saw him like across the bar and he smiled and waved at me and I waved back. And then he came over and then we talked for like a whole bunch. And then we went to the cuff and we were like Saturday night lately. The cuff is like nobody's wearing a shirt and there's a fuck ton of people dancing. Hmm. I did not realize that that's a thing that was happening, Hmm. but it's like cuff is so often hit or miss. That's good to know that Saturdays are back. Yep. So we're like on the dance floor and it's like so crowded that we're like being smushed together Hmm. and yes. And then there's like people making out everywhere and we had, we had earplugs in, but like he's given me like eyes the whole time and our faces were real close and I thought that I'd be gentlemanly about it. I'm, I'm like, could I kiss you? And he like put his hands up and he goes, I'm just looking for friends. <laughs> and I got super shut down, like in a very public way. And it was embarrassing and I hated it. What did you do after that? Well, I kept dancing for a reasonable amount of time so that that's not why I was yeah, leaving. And yeah. then I fucking left. Oh. So he kept dancing with you. Yes. That's wow. That's so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh huh. yeah. Well, that sucks. Well, good for you for uh, taking a swing. I'm sorry that you your swing was a foul ball. Also, the longer like, like today thinking about it, like reminiscing and like being a little bit hungover. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> Wait, why? Because you don't like be all cute and flirty for two whole days. And then like, like, I just I feel very led on. And I'm pretty sure that that's how that cunt rolls. Mm, I anyway have strong opposite of feelings. You're allowed to do that. And it does not mean you're you're allowed to to act like that to be kind and flirty and go to people with tacos and and dance with them and doesn't have to mean that you're into them i agree i absolutely agree with that and i also think that there is a distinct difference in behavior between yes i'm available let's maybe make this a thing and i'm looking for friends and being friendly i i Mm. i firmly believe that there is a difference He absolutely can hang out and talk and I can take him for tacos and not have that mean anything. There's a difference Hmm. there. There is a behavioral difference in how you conduct yourself. And I disagree. Well, fine. (laughs) Uh, The strangest thing about me this week is a little bit of a stretch, but whatever stretch goals, stretch goals. After I got rejected, I left the cuff and I went over and I got a Seattle dog. Mm, Yeah. That which is which is straight enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm eating the Seattle log, and I walked around the block to the backside, sort of by where Union is, and I ordered an Uber. I'm waiting for the Uber, and then I look, and out of like out of the peripheral vision, there's a person sitting in the bus shelter, and they're waving at me, and I, it, they presented female. I don't think they were assigned female at birth, but they're presenting female, but not a drag queen. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, she, so I'm going to say she, even though we didn't do the, like, what are your pronouns yeah, yeah. game. She, like, waves me over, and I <laughs> I go in there, and, and um, she said, come sit with me. And I said, are you waiting for the bus? My thought being, it's 2.30 in the morning. The <laughs> bus does not come here anymore. And and she said, no, my friend left me here. I'm just, I'm just warming up a little bit before I walk home. Do you want to have sex? <laughs> 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 and I said no but thank you <laughs> and she goes she made a face and then she said are you going to finish that 
and took the rest of my hot dog. <laughs> Wait, you didn't give it to her? She just took it? Yes. Oh my God, that's weird. It was great. And then my Uber rolled up. And I'm like, okay, that's my ride. Bye. And then I left. But yeah. So you got rejected and rejected. Yeah. No, yeah. that's a perfect circle. It's a perfect circle. I liked that band. Okay. That's a band? Yeah. No. Oh. They're old. Mm. So that's it. That's it. A special thank you to Richard Simmons. <laughs> For maybe still existing. <laughs> and, uh, probably. Yeah. And we have nothing to say about his orientation. Nope, because we don't know. And uh, <laughs> thanks to the debt-free guys for talking about interesting queer money stuff. Yeah. Thank you to Gigi, the CEO of CrossFit. Yep, yep. Thanks, Gigi. Craig Glassman. That's it. Okay, this has uh, been Gayish. I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. Until next week, be butch, be fabulous, be you. Be fit. See, be fit. Or, or not, whatever. <laughs>